your main man, Ander Wood, presents Dungeons and Dragons Classes Revisited. Now, the next class we're going to talk about is the audacious, opulent autocrat known as the Enchanter. Now you might ask yourself, why do I want to play an Enchanter instead of a mealy mouth, generic, cardboard gray wizard? Well, the first answer that comes to mind is because you don't want to completely and utterly suck. The second that comes to mind is because when you are the ambassador of personality, the entire world is in your hand. The great slave master, the Enchanter, has the ability to dominate and cavort like no other character class. All those who stand before him would fall to their knees in worship of their new lord. It is that sort of tremendous power that the Enchanter, at his highest point, can put forth upon the rest of the world. You can command and enchant nearly anything. Certainly there are a few exceptions, but those are irrelevant because you have your hordes before you to slowly slaughter all opposition to your reign of the mind. Now once you have taken their minds and dictate to them and through them to the rest of the world, true and utter power can be yours when you begin to build an army of possibility through proper planning and positioning of the people in your thrall. Thraldom is a very much the essential component of the Enchanter. Now, Enchanters are a kind of character class that has gotten so little play. People just see the wizard and go, well, that's complicated enough. But no, I say, let's be complicated more still. Let's have more flavor, more intricacy. To me, the Enchanter is the great green velvet Magi of the mind force of the ability to get you to do whatever he wants and be most, most happy about it. Whether it's as simple as going to sleep or as prolonged as spending the rest of your life in his utter, complete, and total service. The Enchanter, however, does have a number of problems of his own, of course, keeping sure to make that all those thralls of yours are truly there as your thrall. They have not slipped through the force you have used to keep them. They have not evaded the power of your mind, the control over theirs. So you must constantly do your gardening. Make sure your tools are still truly your tools and have not left your side. Once you have done that, once you have prepared your plans, the Enchanter has tremendous power. Now often, the most maligned of wizard types is the Necromancer. However, the Enchanter is by far, by far, you're most likely to be horrendously evil. After all, all a Necromancer does is muddy with horrendously dark forces and animate flesh. The Enchanter takes will away from you and forces slavery upon you. The Enchanter is very, very difficult to make a case for a good guy. While the Necromancer may go down a slippery slope, you are simply in very, very flat land when you play an Enchanter. All that should be taken into account. The fact that this is an individual that is covetous of power, that wants to advance regardless of what stands before him, a ruthless individual, perhaps an extremely tyrannical individual, but perhaps small, frail, weak, or having other insufficient aspects to have advanced otherwise, but the power of his mind and the ability to take this shortcut for the road of enchantment very well could be a shortcut, it's discarding perhaps evocation or perhaps abjuration or whichever sorts of magic aren't really going to get them exactly where they want to go. The Enchanter is truly a very overlooked yet very interesting sort of wizard.